Welcome back to FNTV at MWC 25. I'm Steve Saunders. Let's talk about fixed networks with Martin Kreener, Director General of the WBBA, which is not the Women's Basketball Association, but is in fact the World Broadband Association. And Martin was also formerly the President and CEO of the most excellent TM Forum. So a real expert on our couch today. Welcome, Martin. Thanks very much, Steve. So uh, Etsy last year released the first uh, FG5A standard. What is that? Well, I mean, for, when you think about standards, um, and people at home might get quite bored about standards, but the reality is everybody's familiar with 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G in mobile networks, and people talk about that with their mobile phones. Well, in fixed networks and in fiber networks, we've done something similar, and Etsy has released an F5G standard a while back, and just recently has released F5GA, or mm. it's kind of like a 5.5 version of F5G, uh, which means it, it starts looking at where are we going next? People might be lucky enough to have gigabit broadband at home, but F5G is about how do you get 10 gig mm. broadband? How do you get it to be very reliable? How do you get it to be very, very low delays and so on? So that's really what we're talking about with F5GA. Is it actually the same protocols? Now? Well, it's a completely different standard, and of course the devil's in the detail. Mm. But I think um, one of the important points to remember is that it has been, it's been defined in such a way to provide some surety on, on where fixed networks are going. Mm. Up to now, I mean, if you go back into the past, fixed networks would constantly be improving. We had a wide range of capabilities between cable and fiber and copper and so on. But it was never really wrapped up into a banner of we're, we're at this generation. Mm. And these standards are really about putting a stake in the ground saying that these, these technologies are at this generation and now they're moving forward to this generation, right. which will mean you know, faster speeds, better quality for everyone. Right, and uh, I mean, that's obviously the goal. Uh, but it sounds to me like this might compete with fixed wireless access, which is obviously a big success story at the moment. Uh, are, they, are they competitors or do they complement each other? They absolutely complement. Uh -huh. They don't compete. I mean, if you think about uh, any city in the UK or, or France or Spain or the US, you've got fibre running down the streets in, in most cities and people are getting um, fibred up and getting hopefully a gigabit or multiple gigabits mm of broadband speed. But then you go a tiny little bit outside the city and slightly harder to reach locations. Mm. And it becomes very expensive to roll fiber out there. So you need something like fixed wireless access, you know, which is using your, your mobile network mm. in order to give you something similar to broadband at a much cheaper price from the operator's point of view in terms of reaching. Right. Um, the, the slightly harder to, to, um, to access uh, houses and businesses. And then if you're really out in the sticks, mm. maybe you need satellite. Yeah. And yeah. so so you need to you don't think about them as competitors. You say fiber goes to most people in relatively easy to get places. Fixed wireless access is a quick way of getting broadband to people in slightly more difficult to get places. And satellite is a fabulous way of getting broadband to people in the very hard very, to reach yeah. places. I can't uh, let you sit on the FNTV couch without asking you a last quick question uh, about AI. Is AI having a big effect on the uh, fixed network uh, market? Uh, AI kind of worms its way into everything that we do. First of all, AI, from the, the business or consumer point of view, is putting a demand, mm -hmm. an increased demand on, on bandwidth that people will need to be, you know, to have that access to. So, uh, you know, it's got a big impact on demand, but it's also got an impact on the supply side in terms of we use AI, for example, within the World Broadband Association, we're just about to release a paper talking about how to use AI to more efficiently deploy uh, broadband, you know, to make the choices between fiber or fixed wireless access or satellite, yeah. you know, on an economic basis to use. So using AI in pre-deployment and deployment, and of course, you use AI to manage the networks because things are becoming incredibly complex. And so I think overall, it. AI is to be found everywhere. Its paw prints are everywhere within the broadband industry. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, my uh, personal suspicion is that we may 
actually trigger another optical networking boom uh, once all of the AI traffic really starts to ramp up. We may be back to the year 2000. Martin, a real pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us uh, in the FNTV studio here at MWC 25. FNTV, what are you looking at? Thank you.